morning, San Antonio starts right now. Breaking news this hour, a fire forces a family to evacuate their home overnight. We have details. Plus, Georgia officials count the final votes of the nation's turbulent 2020 election season. Tuesday started out mild with some potential fog and oh, wait till you see what we have this morning. You may not even need a jacket. Yeah, it's pretty warm out there. Good morning. It is Wednesday, January 6th. Let's go straight to Mike and get the scoop on what is happening out there on a very, very early Wednesday morning. Yeah, it's humid. It's warm out there and we got a little mist, a little fog. I mean, just you can just kind of feel it when you step outside. We'll start to see a couple of showers uh, developing. So as far as a jacket, you might want it to be somewhat of a rain jacket, especially for the first chunk of the day. There's nothing being picked up on radar as of right now, and that view is pretty good out there. But go up the road to New Braunfels, got some fog three miles visibility and unlike the past oh gosh half dozen times we've had fog it is not well there are some uh, areas down there around Beeville very thick fog but got a lot of it off to the west in the Rio Grande Valley Del Rio at uh, just a quarter mile visibility Carrizo Springs mile and a half two and a half at uh, Uvalde so we're going to keep an eye on the fog this morning no advisories yet but just watch it because it will continue to get thicker as the morning rolls on and everybody with a couple of exceptions well up into the uh, low to mid 60s were above the normal high temperature as of right now, if you didn't see it yesterday, Mountain Cedar sky high 18,200. We've got another front moving through later on this afternoon. It's going to be breezy and it's going to be shaking up those trees. Temperatures are going to be basically steady this morning. Fogs, mist, and then as we go into probably after the morning commute, a few showers are going to start to develop, especially up in the hill country and even a few thunderstorms working their way down here. And that's going to be the case through the early afternoon hours, just after lunchtime. Then that front's going to move through 68 for a high temperature. That's going to be about 2, 3 o'clock when that front moves through and then we'll drop down and continue to drop down on those northwesterly winds. And then it's back to January the next couple of days. Weekend forecast in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Samuel King, good morning, sir. What's going on? Good morning. Things are pretty quiet right now. We do have some construction that is uh, wrapping up, including uh, down here on 35 uh, southbound. This is between 410 and a Fisher Road. There are some uh, closures there to watch out for. And looking at some travel times uh, this morning here in that area, things looking pretty good on 410 between. And now moving to Transguide 37 at Jones, looking okay this morning as well. Guys, over to you. This morning, San Antonio family escapes a house fire in North Bear County, but, but there is extensive damage to their home. This all happened in the 25,600 block of Crimson Beauty. Our Stephen Cavazos is live where it happened and what do we know about this fire so far, Stephen? Well, good morning, Mark. We still, we still see some folks out here that are combing through some of the damage this morning at this home right behind me. Now, fire officials do tell us the extent of the damage is estimated to be about $185,000. They say most of that damage, as you can see here, is towards the top of the home. Now, the fire broke out just after 10 last night here off Crimson Beauty, and fire officials say they received reports of a child who was trapped inside the home. Now, thankfully, when crews arrived on the scene, everyone, including the family's pets, were all able to make it out safely Now the fire did start in the attic and crews were able to vent out the flames by putting a hole in the roof. Now the Bulverde Volunteer Fire Department did receive some help or told by other crews from Chavano Park and Camp Bulls as well as Spring Branch and the Bear County Sheriff's Office was also out here to assist. Now thankfully Mark there were no injuries to report in this fire. However the cause is still under investigation. Back to you. ABC News is projecting the Democrat Raphael Warnock is one of the winners of the Georgia runoff races. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze is in Atlanta with the latest. This morning, Democrats one step closer to taking control of the U.S. Senate. ABC News now projects Democratic challenger Reverend Raphael Warnock will defeat Republican incumbent Senator Kelly Leffler in one of Georgia's runoff races. And every day I'm in the United States Senate. I will fight for you. Warnock is a prominent black preacher at Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta, a pulpit that once belonged to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. In a victory speech, Warnock acknowledged his historic role as Georgia's first black elected senator. I come before you tonight as a man who knows that the improbable journey that led me to this place in this historic moment in America 
could only happen here. But his opponent, a staunch ally of President Trump, not giving in. We have a path to victory and we're staying on it. I, that's right. The other race between Democrat John Ossoff and Republican David Perdue remains too close to call, separated by just a couple thousand votes. Democrats need to win both seats to flip the Senate. This was a political earthquake in Georgia. It leaves Democrats with the very real possibility of taking control of the Senate for the first two years of Joe Biden's term, and it punctures the myth of infallibility, of unbeatability that President Trump has created inside the Republican Party. President Trump has been a constant presence in the election here, chastising the state's election officials and claiming without evidence the November votes were rigged. Some Republicans fear the president's claims may have suppressed GOP turnout. After the election for the president, it was just kind of like, wow, did our vote count? Election officials here in Georgia say the final results could come this afternoon, but they're also giving a reminder that candidates can request a recount if the results are within a margin of 0.5%. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Atlanta. Here at home, COVID numbers are nearing record highs. Here's how many COVID-19 patients in our area hospitals right now. 1,318 are hospitalized. That's 51 more than the highest point over the summer. 369 are in the intensive care unit and 185 are on ventilators. In the latest report, more than 2,000 new coronavirus cases were included. Metro Health says part of that is li likely linked to the holiday season. Five new deaths were also reported and more than 15 1,500 people have died since the start of the pandemic. 436, 63 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, a first look at what could be the future of online shopping thanks to Amazon. And next, more on an FBI investigation into a threat to fly a plane into the U.S. Capitol building. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, it's 63 degrees. That's right, 63 degrees when you step out. It doesn't feel like January, but for now, we're going to check in with Mike after the break. And welcome back. It's 439. Despite pressure from President Donald Trump, sources say Vice President Mike Pence will not block certification of President-elect Joe Biden's win. These sources say Pence told the president he doesn't have the power to derail the process. But that's not the official word from the president's team. The campaign tweeted out a statement from the president saying he and Pence are in total agreement and that Pence has the constitutional authority to decertify the results or send them back to the states. Congress is set to convene today where lawmakers are expected to certify that election. The FBI is investigating the breach of an air traffic control system after a threat to fly a plane into the U.S. Capitol building was broadcast. The plan was said to be revenge for the killing of Iranian General Qasem Soleimani. First anniversary of his death was Sunday. Sources say the threat doesn't appear to be a credible one, but it's a crime to make threats over aviation frequencies. U.S. authorities have been on high alert ahead of the anniversary as concerns emerge Iran may have used it or try to use it as a reason to target the United States. Hong Kong police have arrested about 50 former lawmakers and activists in the largest move against the city's pro-democracy movement since a national security law was imposed last June. A top official said the arrest targeted people suspected of overthrowing or interfering with the Hong Kong government in executing its duties. They were accused of subverting state power by participating in unofficial election primaries for the territory's legislature last year. All of the pro-democracy, excuse me, democracy candidates in those primaries appear to have been arrested. The San Antonio Spurs opening a five game road trip last night in Los Angeles against the Clippers and at the same trying to end a four game losing streak. For the first time in a while, Spurs got things going early and it paid off in the end. Patty Mills had a career high eight three pointers and scored 27 points off the bench. Led the Spurs to a win over the Clippers 116-113 to snap that four game skid. Jante Murray added 21 points. Rudy Gay had 16. LaMarcus Aldridge, Keldon Johnson also had a, a career high 11 rebounds for the Spurs. They led by 24 in the first and withstood an onslaught by Kawhi Leonard in the third before nearly blowing their lead in the fourth. But a win's a win. That's right. That's what matters the most. They stay in L.A. to face the Lakers coming up tomorrow night. 
Heisman Trophy was handed out last night virtually during the pandemic. The winter was Alabama wide receiver Devontae Smith, who is now the best player in college football. Smith became the first wide receiver to win the White Heisman in 29 seasons, breaking the string of quarterbacks winning, and he beat three of them to win it. His teammate at Alabama, Mac Jones, Clemson's Trevor Lawrence, and Florida's Kyle Trask. Congratulations, sir. Congratulations, and of course, of like that virtual ceremony look like, or at least at the you know the people you know behind behind the scenes at least. Right. Yeah. It's <laughs> 442, 63 degrees. It's early. I'm sorry. Still ahead, what you need to know about scammers and trying to take advantage of people trying to get COVID-19 vaccines. And next, a first look at Amazon's newest service that could be the future of buying clothes online. In this morning's GMA First Look, could this be the future of online shopping? Amazon is bringing big tech to fashion. A custom-made t-shirt you design with sizing aided by photos you provide. It gives you options like v-neck, crew neck, slim or loose fit, and length. Then you take two pictures wearing fitted clothing and upload them. This is the Amazon shirt that I ordered. V-neck, it's, uh, it's fitted on my body. It's pretty well sewn. I've already washed it. It's holding up. You're wondering if it's better than any other t-shirt? I don't know if I would notice any sort of tangible difference in my every day-to-day -day life if I had the $25 shirt. This is the $5 shirt, but they're both, they're both pretty, pretty decent shirts to wear with these jeans. And what exactly happens to that data that you upload about your fit? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland, California. Okay, heads up, if you get a call or see an offer to get quicker access to a dose of the COVID-19 vaccine, don't buy into it. 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moore, it says con artists are seizing the moment to try to take advantage of the crisis. As millions anxiously wait their turns for the COVID-19 vaccine, frustrated by more demand than supply, scammers are taking their shot. They're preying on that fear of missing out, the fear of uh, you, you might be last in line or this is a great chance to get up in the line. So now the Better Business Bureau and several federal agencies are warning heads up for emails, text messages, phone calls and social media posts offering early access to the vaccine in exchange for payment. It's important to remember that the vaccine is not for sale, meaning you can't buy it online. You can't buy access to it. Um, any website or person offering should be an immediate red flag. And they warn, don't click on any links in those offers. They're likely after your personal data or will install malware. The state of Texas has a vaccine rollout plan based on who needs protection most first. So while you may be eager, the Federal Trade Commission says you can't pay to get your name on a list. And no one from a vaccine distribution site will call asking for your social security number or credit card number to sign you up. If you receive any unsolicited offers concerning a vaccine, have a healthy dose of skepticism and do your research sticking with reliable sources. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Marilyn, with the always sage advice. Yes, especially right now. And speaking of right now, let's go ahead and check in with Samuel King. I think the roads were looking pretty okay earlier. Yeah, too good to be true maybe right now, but looks pretty good here. But we're going to have a situation up here in New Braunfels uh, this morning. Good morning to you. Uh, the northbound lane of 35 at FM 306 uh, is going to be closed today uh, from 9 to 3. Uh, you're working on the crash cushion at that overpass there, so that's something to watch out for. But right now, this morning, if you're coming the other way, uh, southbound into uh, downtown San Antonio, 26 minutes, and then from Seguin, a uh, good half hour on I-10 this morning. So uh, things looking good there as well as they do on I-10 at Woodstone. And this morning also have I-10 at Callahan looking great this morning, folks. As you're walking to the car or to the bus this morning, you may have that jacket in your hands and just kind of hold on to it for now. <laughs> yeah, uh, also walking to the car, especially when I got out of the, in, in the parking lot, it just, it was kind of, it seemed dampish. A little yeah. bit. Yeah, and I thought I saw a little spritz, a little sprinkle yep. here or there as I step on my own shoe. <laughs> <laughs> Don't Careful trip. about that. Uh, yeah, there's a little bit of mist, uh, some fog around the area. And of course, yesterday was a pretty gray day. We saw a pinch.
pinch of sunshine in the afternoon, but uh, those clouds uh, really kept us uh, down a little bit lower than expected. We stayed in the mid 60s yesterday, still above normal though. And today we are going to be in the above normal side prior to the front moving on through because we got such a warm start. Obviously nothing is really showing up in this uh, picture as of right now, uh, but we are going to be seeing showers developing as the morning rolls on fog. Well, look at that New Braunfels. What? 10 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago, it was down to three miles now back up to seven miles visibility, but it has dropped down around Del Rio, still fog off into the west in Rio Grande Valley and down here to the southeast along the coastal plain. So we got to watch out for fog again throughout the rest of this morning with all this humidity out there and these temperatures uh, are very, very high. Dew points are back up above 60. That's when you start to feel the humidity and that's going to be the situation through the first portion of the day. As a matter of fact, these dew points have gone up in town a 25 degree basically from yesterday 25 30 degrees on average so all that humidity came back in here but that's going to be changing by about mid afternoon here's what it looks like we stay very humid throughout the morning that's going to help to feed some of the showers even a couple of thunderstorms around here and then here comes the front about early afternoon just after lunchtime and that drier air is going to come in here that will clear us out and then we've got some beautiful weather for the next couple of days the front is up to the northwest of us and you can see temperatures drop off pretty good and again the timing obviously a little bit sooner in the hill country and then like I said, about early afternoon, say two o'clock ish here in town as it's looking right now. So we've got clouds around here. Showers will continue to develop. And then as the front pushes off to the east, especially basically east of our area, we're going to have some uh, pretty good thunderstorms developing up uh, east and northeast of uh, Austin. And some of those could be on the stronger side. But again, we start to clear on out of here. And then with those clear skies and that cooler air moving on in, that's going to really allow things to cool down tomorrow morning. We do have a marginal to slight risk risk for severe storms. But again, this is pretty much uh, on the eastern fringes of our viewing area. Some of those thunderstorms could be a little bit stronger, but pretty much anything. The better chance for anything severe is going to be further off to the the east of us. Jumping ahead in toward the weekend, going to have to keep an eye on this. Mentioned it yesterday. We've got more precipitation, some rain coming in here overnight Saturday into Sunday and that cooler air. And this is that model that's very aggressive with the cooler air kind of coming on in here. So it's it's still wanting to uh, scare up a, some snow, maybe a little bit of sleep mixed in with some of the rain, and that would be in the uh, first portion of the day, it looks like, on Sunday. 66 at noon. We'll have showers, a few thunderstorms that are going to be developing later on this morning through the early afternoon. Front moves on through. We'll make it up to 68 and then drop back down. So mid and even lower 60s later on this afternoon. It's going to be breezy as well. Winds out of the northwest, 15, 20, 25 miles per hour. Down to 41 tomorrow. 62 normal temperatures tomorrow, colder Friday, cold Saturday morning, clouds increase, and we got that chance for some rain, maybe a, some mixed precipitation, potentially in uh, up in the hill country on Sunday, and then very cold starting off next week. Wow, what a change. Yeah, big change this afternoon. I mean, it's warm and humid, and it's going to feel like January. Finally. You ready, Steph? I'm ready. Okay. All the coats are still out. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully they're hung up. Yeah, of course. 452, 63 degrees. And up next, an update on Larry King, who has been in the hospital for almost two weeks battling COVID-19. And here are your lottery numbers. Pick 3820, Fireball 8. Your daily four numbers, 7771, Fireball 2. By the way, nobody won mega. It's up to $490 million. Wow. Cash 5, 210, 142235. And the Mega Millions that Mark was talking about, 20, 43, 51, 55, 57, Mega Ball 4, Mega Plier 2. Powerball's up to 410 for tonight. A lot of money. Good luck, guys. The Grammys are the latest awards to get postponed, plus an update on Larry King, who's battling COVID-19. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Because of the coronavirus surge ravaging Los Angeles, the Grammys are being postponed. The show was set for January 31st in downtown L.A., but now the Recording Academy, CBS, and the show's producers say in a statement that with hospitals overwhelmed in the L.A. area and ICUs at capacity, they felt postponing is the right thing to do. The Grammys will move to March. The next major awards show, the Golden Globes, is still on the schedule for the end of February, for now. A sad ending to a strange story. Word once again that actress Tanya Roberts has died after her publicist confirmed her death Sunday, then walked that back on Monday. We're told by the same publicist that Roberts died Monday night at a hospital in Los Angeles, and it's not entirely clear why there was confusion. 
She co-starred in the 1985 James Bond film A View to a Kill and Fox's That 70s Show. Tanya Roberts was 65. An update on Larry King, who's been in the hospital in Los Angeles for almost two weeks battling COVID-19. A source close to the King family tells ABC News that he's getting better little by little each day. And doctors are talking about a day for him to be discharged, which the source says is, quote, nothing short of miraculous. King, who was 87, had been in the ICU. And happy birthday today to Kate McKinnon, the Emmy-winning Saturday Night Live star is 37, while British chef and TV host Nigella Lawson is 61. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News. It's now 457, 64 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, Vice President Mike Pence faces perhaps his greatest political challenge when he oversees a joint session of Congress today that will certify election results. And why some atomic clock scientists are suggesting shortening the length of a minute. Details in Tech Bytes. Live from KSEC 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. The fire causes major damage to a home in the Stone Oak area overnight, forcing a family to flee their house. A showdown expected on Capitol Hill as Congress convenes to certify the presidential election results. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington with details coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, it's a no jacket kind of morning, but hold on to your jacket. You will need it soon. Big changes on the way. Good morning to you. It is Wednesday, the 6th of January. Thanks for joining us. I uh, hope you had a good first part of your week. Uh, we're halfway there. When are those changes going to start around here weather-wise, Mike Osterhage? Well, we will start to see uh, changes as far as showers and uh, a couple of storms developing later on this morning. There's nothing being picked up on radar right now. There's a little bit of mist and some fog out there, so you got to watch out for that. And then as far as the temperature changes, that'll be later on this afternoon with the front moving on through. But we're at 64 right now, which is above the normal high temperature. And then look at that bottom number. Dew point is at 61. You get above 60. Yep, you definitely feel the humidity and you're going to feel it when you step outside and that's helping with some of that fog and some of that mist as well. So temperatures will continue to go up into the uh, about mid and upper 60s. I think we noon 67 degrees. We top off about 68 early afternoon and then notice how we're going to be dropping down to 65 by 5 o'clock. So the front moves through early afternoon. Much better rain chances uh, improving uh, later on this morning and right around lunchtime showers, thunderstorms, then rain chances will go away after that uh, front moves on through here. Yesterday, the aquifer reading. It did go down one tenth of a foot and the allergens. Are you sitting down for this one? Mountain Cedar 18,200. Of course, today's updated count comes out in just after seven o'clock and then of course we've got that front moving through later on this afternoon. Visibility right now. There is a little bit of fog out there. Uh, Braunfels was down to three miles uh, right at 430. Now it's up to seven, but you know, it's one of those where it's going to be going back and forth. Randolph has just a little bit of fog and unlike the past couple of mornings, now we do have a lot down here to the southeast around Beeville with zero visibility, Victoria as well, but then also out to the west along the, the Rio Grande Valley. So got to watch this. It's going to be sticking around throughout the rest of the morning and probably even mid morning. And then, like I said, we see those uh, showers developing. So showers and a few thunderstorms around here. East and northeast of our viewing area, some could be on the stronger side. And then later on this afternoon, the front moves on through here. Again, I'll put a time on it here in town about 2 o'clock, obviously sooner in the hill country. Breezy and we'll be clearing on out. And then the rest of the week, sunny, cool, then cold. Weekend forecast coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Samuel King. Anything big going on, sir? Nothing big going on so far. So good, Mike, looking at the maps. We do have this, this closure that we've been having all week, the HOV lanes and the outside main lanes on I-10. This is a uh, west between La Quintero Parkway and Ralph Fair Road. Starts at 9, runs to 3 this week. Looking at some travel times around the region, 24 minutes currently on I-10 from Bernie, so it looks good out there. Uh, 30 minutes if you're coming in from Seguin, 28 minutes on 37 from Pleasanton. And here's a look at Transguide right now, 281 at the quarry. Uh, looking fine uh, this morning, as does 281 at Grayson. Mark Stephanie, over to you. Multiple fire crews on the scene of a major house fire that led to thousands of dollars in damage. This happened last night in the 25,600 block of Crimson Beauty. Our Stephen Cavazos is live there now. And Stephen, what do you know about the family who was inside? 
Well, Stephanie, thankfully the family and their pets were able to make it out of the home safely, but that fire left some damage that's pretty severe. Just take a look right behind me. We're looking at some of that damage this morning. It's towards the second story of the home. Now, fire officials do tell us that the costs are estimated to be around $185,000. Now, when crews did arrive on the scene, flames could be seen coming from the second story. Now, the Bilverde Fire Department received some help from surrounding fire departments, including Chavano Park, Camp Bullis, and Spring Branch. Now, the Bear County Sheriff's Office was also here to assist. Now, they believe the fire started in the attic and crews had to vent out the flames by putting a hole in the roof. Now, again, Stephanie Mark, thankfully, no injuries were reported during this fire, but the cause is still under investigation this morning. Reporting live, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Mark. Congress is set to formally confirm President-elect Joe Biden as the winner of the 2020 presidential election. Lawmakers are expected to certify the Electoral College votes in a joint session on Capitol Hill today. But some GOP lawmakers plan to challenge the process. ABC's Faith Abube is in Washington with the latest. Overnight, President Trump denying reports that Vice President Mike Pence told him he lacks the authority to overturn the election in his favor. In a statement, the president claiming he and the vice president both agree Pence, quote, has the power to act. Pence is expected to oversee a joint session of Congress today as they certify electors for president-elect Joe Biden. According to the Constitution, the vice president's role is merely ceremonial, a job that only involves opening envelopes that show electoral college votes and announcing the winner. But President Trump has now repeatedly suggested falsely that Pence can do more to benefit him. I hope that our great vice president, our great vice president comes through for us. Sources tell ABC News during a White House lunch on Tuesday, Pence pushed back on the idea, telling Trump he has no authority to overturn Biden's win. Trump's own lawyer agrees. If that were the case, any vice president could refuse Andy any election. Still, the usually quiet joint session to certify the electoral votes expected to be full of political theater. 13 GOP senators and 140 House Republicans say they plan to reject Biden's electors, other Republicans quickly distancing themselves. There is no role for the Congress to object to, to the electors. Meantime, blocks from the White House. <laughs> Scenes like this, as many as 30,000 Trump supporters were expected to gather for demonstrations. President Trump also expected to join. The National Guard deployed to provide, quote, traffic control in the city. And despite any objections today, Congress is still expected to certify the presidential election results for Joe Biden. But it will be a long day on Capitol Hill. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. A San Antonio family working to help others have a second chance at life after losing their loved one in a drive-by shooting. 13-year-old Mark Valdez was shot on New Year's Day at his home on Vestal Place. Police are still looking for two suspects in connection with that shooting. Mark's family says that doctors have determined that the teen is clinically brain dead. They say Mark has been on a ventilator to preserve his organs. Our nephew was literally eating a grilled cheese sandwich and two minutes later he went to the room and that's the, that was the end of you know, my nephew's life. Like My nephew's life was cut short because these guys wanted to be reckless. I don't even wish this pain on anybody. I don't. As much hate as I have, I, I, I wouldn't wish this pain on nobody because nobody deserves this. The family is donating Mark's organs to give eight other families a chance at live. Police say the suspects drove off in a white Ford Mustang convertible. If you have any information on the case, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at number 210-224-STOP. The 87th legislative session will begin next week at the state capitol, and the pandemic will have an impact. State Representative Lyle Larson is already proposing a measure that would make the meetups happen every year for 70 days instead of the 140-day meetings held every other year. A change in the legislative schedule isn't the only proposal. Lawmakers will also face topics on budget, police reform, redistricting, and health care during the pandemic. Now, all of the people who lost their work and through that lost their health insurance, what can we do to expand health insurance in Texas with the help of the federal government and our tax dollars that we're sending to Washington? Lawmakers meet from January 2nd until the end of May. In time now is 508 and 64 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, times are changing literally. Why some experts are talking about changing the length of a minute. 
Also next, what a new study is saying about the correlation of iron levels in our blood and our lifespan. Outside with live cam, oh, the weather's going to be changing again. You knew it was coming. I mean, geez, it's 64 degrees out there right now, and it's January 6th. Don't, don't, those don't exactly sync up, do they? We'll get an update from Mike coming up. Welcome back 512. Of course, this is Texas and many of us love eating red meat, but scientists are saying maybe we should be opting for a food option lower in iron levels. A new study is showing the correlation of iron levels in our blood and our lifespan. Sarah Costa explains the findings. If you love cutting into that juicy steak or taking a bite of that burger, you may want to pump the brakes on your red meat intake, according to a recent study. A new study looked at more than 1 million people to study their iron in their blood levels and findings are suggesting that the iron levels in the blood could play a role in how long you live. The international study using genetic data from more than 1 million people suggests that maintaining healthy levels of iron in the blood could be key to aging better and living longer. Results show too much iron in your blood appear to be linked to an increase in dying earlier. Paul Timmers with the University of Edinburgh in the United Kingdom says that they are excited by these findings as they suggest that high levels of iron in the blood reduces our healthy years of life and keeping these levels in check could prevent age-related damage. He says that the findings on iron metabolism might also start to explain why very high levels of iron-rich red meat in the diet has been linked to age-related conditions such as heart disease. We can add this latest study to the growing evidence that iron overload or our bodies not being able to break it down properly can have an influence on how long we're likely to live as well as how healthy we're likely to be in our later years. Scientists also hope that with this study further down the line, we can see the development of drugs designed to lower levels of iron in the blood, which could potentially add extra years to our lives. Back to you guys. I, I'm now just thinking shish kebabs. <laughs> The video looks good, right? Oh, cool. Yeah, it looked delicious. <laughs> yes. 514, 64 degrees. And still ahead and more details on if Apple is making it possible for a MacBook to serve as a wireless charging station. And why there's a new push to shorten the official length of a minute. Our boy Blue really was a member of the Bishop family. He was part of everything we did. And he really did inspire us to start Blue Buffalo. We just weren't happy with the foods that were out there. We thought we could do better. And now millions of dogs and cats enjoy our healthy recipes. They're made with the finest natural ingredients and real meat first, and no chicken or poultry byproduct meals. That's the promise we made to Blue. And it's our promise to you and your pet. Because like you, we love them like family too. Instantly clear everyday congestion with Vic Sinex Saline Nasal Mist. <laughs> For drug free relief that works fast. Vic Sinex, instantly clear everyday congestion. Want a brain better? Unlike ordinary memory supplements, Nareva has clinically proven ingredients that fuel five indicators of brain performance. Memory, focus, accuracy, learning, and concentration. Try our new gummies for 30 days and see the difference. In today's Tech Bites, a big expansion for Amazon's Air Fleet. For the first time, the company has purchased 11 used Boeing jets. The 767s used to be part of Delta and WestJet Airlines. The planes are expected to be ready for delivery service next year. And Apple wants to turn its devices into charging stations. Reports say the company has filed two patents for the technology that would turn MacBooks and iPads into wireless chargers. Users would simply have to put their iPhones or watches on the device to charge. And finally, it may be time to adjust the atomic clock. Scientists are considering shortening the minute to 59 seconds, and that's because the Earth is rotating faster than usual. A one second difference could set things straight. They've tinkered with time before when the planet was spinning slower. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. 64 degrees. We're going to talk to Mike about this uh, next change to our forecast in a moment. First, let's talk to Samuel King. Hey, good morning. How are the roads looking? Yeah, it sounds like 2020 is extending to 2021. The earth is moving <laughs> faster than normal. They have to change the clock.
Uh, we do have a crash here, though, uh, this morning. First one of the morning that we could see. This is at Wordsbark Parkway at Nacogdoches Road, so that's something to watch out for in that area. And take a look at Transguide 410 at Fredericksburg, I-10 at Woodstone. Those look fine this morning, guys. But if they start messing with it then, then the movie Tenet really makes sense. Oh, no, it won't. <laughs> <laughs> I still haven't seen it. <laughs> no, it won't. Okay. That's yeah. when you got to see twice, as we were talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you've only seen it once, right, Mark? So far? Um, see, yeah, just, just once. Just once, that one. Okay. Yeah. My brain, that part of my brain right. is still re rebuilding. Okay. Yes. Yes. Take your word for it. All right. Just a I bunch of gray goo. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? I got to watch it, too. So. At least I, I had my boys there to help me try and figure it out, so. Cheetah. Yeah, and this, this is this, and this is like, yeah, so. But it does make your, your head kind of hurt, so. Ouch. Anyway, all right, beautiful picture out there. Felt nice to get out and take a walk. Every day is good for that, and it's going to be good strolling weather the next uh, couple of afternoons, especially because we're going to be nice and cool and sunny out there. But uh, beautiful view with the, uh, the deer out there in the local park. Thank you for the KSAC Connect picture. All right, nothing is going on in this picture. Uh, we don't see any reduced visibility, no rain as of yet. We don't have anything showing up on radar right now. Uh, Randolph, nine miles visibility, uh, seven at New Braunfels. That actually went up a little bit from earlier this morning. And further off to the east, as is usually the case, We've got a lot of fog. Beeville at zero, five Victoria, but also plenty of fog out to the west this morning. Uvalde, Carrizo Springs, and especially Del Rio. This will be sticking around for the next couple of hours until that front moves on through here. Obviously, it's going to come through, <clears throat> excuse me, sooner up in the hill country and here in town about two o'clock to put a number on it. Uh, it's cooler out there north and west, but again, it will take just a few hours for that to move on through here. And you can see it's going to drop temperatures down pretty good and we'll sort of get a secondary push of cooler air than tomorrow. Tonight we'll have some clear skies that allow things to cool down and then we'll really start to cool down for Friday and going into the weekend. As far as uh, rain chances, well, first of all, there's the line. One thing with this front, it is going to clear things out as it moves on through here. It will start to touch off a few more showers. They will be developing as we go into probably going to be rain free throughout most all of the morning commute. There's still some fog out there, a little bit of mist too. It was kind of damp on the roads this morning. So just sort of take it easy. But as we get into the mid morning hours, we will start to see more of these showers developing here and into about lunchtime and off to the east is where some of those thunderstorms are going to be a bit stronger and potentially on the severe side. And then the front comes through, continues to clear things on out and we've got a great evening then setting up marginal to slight risk for severe weather. Marginal risk is in our extreme eastern counties. Uh, for a severe storm, high winds and hail would be the biggest threats. Jump into the, got to keep showing you this, jump into the, uh, the weekend. And as we get into Sunday, we will have another chance for some rain around here. But there's another front moving on in. And the timing of these two things, this is the computer model that is very bullish on mixing that in with a little bit of uh, maybe some sleet or some snow up in northern portions of the hill country. And that would be on Sunday. Still five days away. Things can change, but just to kind of keep you... Keep that uh, in the back of your mind. 66 degrees today at noon. Showers, a couple of thunderstorms, so we'll see some of that rain developing. And some of the storms off to the east and northeast could be on the stronger side. And then it's going to be breezy and behind the front. Wind will start to pick up a little bit behind, uh, ahead of the front, but especially behind it. We'll top off 68 at uh, about 2, 3 o'clock today and then drop down into the mid and lower 60s later on this afternoon. And then down to 41 tomorrow morning, 62 for a high. Those are normal numbers, basically. And then Friday, much colder in the morning. Same thing with Saturday. Clouds increase Saturday. Chance for some rain, maybe mixed up to the north on Sunday. Mixed with? Uh, a little bit of sleep, a couple of uh, snowflakes up in the I, I just like getting you to commit to saying the word. Because <laughs> <laughs> you get a little squirrely. <laughs> well, well, yeah, it's still five days out. But, you know, computer right. models just far in advance are, are taking that chunk of cold air and getting it in here fairly quickly. So. Still makes you wince a little bit, doesn't it? <laughs> kind of. All right, we'll, we'll pay attention as we lead up to that day. And watch Mike wince, 523, 64 degrees. And still ahead in your morning spotlight. Another award show put on hold, plus why fans continue to put their support behind Liam Neeson. 526, it appears music fans will have to wait a little bit longer for the industry's biggest night. CNN's David Daniel has that and more entertainment news in today's Hollywood Minute. COVID-19 has pushed the Grammy Awards down the calendar. The Recording Academy has postponed this year's ceremony, which was scheduled for January 31st until March 14th. 
The show was already going to be limited. No audience, no red carpet, just performers and presenters on stage. But California has had a post-holiday surge of coronavirus cases, prompting Hollywood unions to call for a hold on productions. Beyonce leads this year's nominations with nine. I want to be remembered for who I was, but not for who I'm about to become. Here's a look at Colin Firth and Stanley Tucci in the official trailer for Supernova. They play longtime partners on vacation amid a life-changing diagnosis. Supernova arrives in theaters January 29th and on digital platforms February 16th. I'm coming for you. Movie fans still love Liam Neeson. His latest action flick, Honest Thief, which hit digital December 8th, tops the latest Apple TV app movie chart, ahead of more recent releases such as The Crude's A New Age and the Gerard Butler thriller, Greenland. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. I met Liam Neeson. I wouldn't ask him for an autograph. I was like, hey man, could you do the greeting on my voicemail, please? <laughs> That's a good idea. Right? You'll be prepared when you do meet him. 527, 64 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, what's next now that some Republicans say they will reject the Electoral College votes during today's certification process. Our reaction continues in Wisconsin after announcement that uh, a police officer will not face charges in the shooting of Jacob Blake. Plus, we'll tell you about Starbucks' newest line of winter coffee drinks. Hi, good morning. It is Wednesday, January 6th. Glad you are with us. Uh, changes are afoot in the weather department. As a matter of fact, I just glanced across the studio. It looks like Mike is already tracking a few showers. Yeah, just a couple of very, very light ones out there. There's some mist and some uh, some drizzle, a little bit of fog around and just started to kind of tweak radar a little bit and pick up a few showers out there. Roads are kind of dampish, though, and even walking in the parking lot out here at the station this morning, it was kind of it almost felt like it was sort of damp or slippery out there. Dew points at 61, a lot of humidity in the air. Temperature 64. We're above the normal uh, high temperature right now. Visibility nine miles to Braunfels, nine miles at Randolph. This has actually uh, gotten better up there around New Braunfels, but we still have a thick pea soup fog around uh, Beeville. A lot of it off to the west, Uvalde, Carrizo Springs, Del Rio, and this will be uh, sticking around for the next couple of hours. So here's radar, and again, just a couple of these little sprinkly showers that are showing up. Uh, this is a little bit of clutter around the radar site right there, and there may be one or two of them, even perhaps uh, around 1604, 281, but uh, up there further to the north, and you can see everything's moving up to the northeast. And so we'll see a few more showers developing throughout the rest of the morning, even a couple of the thunderstorms. Some of those could be strong way up uh, east and northeast of our area. Mountain Cedar, some of the highest reading. I think that's the highest reading we've seen so far this season, 18,200. Updated counts going to be coming out later on this morning. And then, of course, we got that front moving through here later on today, which should give those trees another good shake. Temperatures, well, we're very mild, of course, and we're going to be seeing rain develop and temperatures will get into the uh, mid and upper 60s. And then by about 3 o'clock, all the rain's going to be pretty much out of here because that front will move on through and temperatures will be dropping down then and uh, dropping off fairly quickly. We'll have some clear skies over overnight and a very cool morning tomorrow. So got some rain this morning and then it goes. We go back to January weather by later on this afternoon. Weekend forecast in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now and Samuel King. What's going on, sir? Oh, good morning, Mike. We do have one uh, accident up here. Uh, this is at Nacogdoches Parkway and uh, and uh, where's uh, Nacogdoches Road and where's Park Parkway? Got it mixed up there and it threw me off because it just uh, popped off, so it's clear. So uh, things looking good there. Uh, here at Bandera Road between 1604 and 410, 11 minutes between 410 and 1604, nine minutes going the other way. L quick look at some other travel times, 25 minutes if you're coming in from New Braunfels, 29 minutes on I-10 from Seguin. And here's a look at Transguide, a 281 at Grayson and 410 at Fredericksburg Road. Looking good. Guys, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. It looks like words weren't enough. San Antonio police say an argument ended with a shooting in a west side neighborhood. It happened in the 2000 block of Montezuma. Our Katrina Weber is at public safety headquarters where police are still working to find the shooter. Now, Katrina, is there any word on the man who was shot? Well, police told us that that man uh, was stable as he was loaded into an ambulance to go to the hospital. The shooter was gone before officers ever arrived. Police found the 30-year-old wounded man on Montezuma Street, not far from Guadalupe. They say shortly before 3 this morning, someone in a black car drove up to that location, had words with the victim, then shot him in his upper body. Again, police say the wounded man was stable as he left for the hospital. 
they're still looking for the shooter, but it sounds like they don't have much of a description. They told us that uh, they only know that he was wearing a tank top and driving a black car. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. The certification of a U.S. presidential election is largely a ceremonial event. There's usually little, if any, drama when Congress meets to count electoral college vote ballots. However, that will not be the case today, CNN's John Lawrence reports. President Donald Trump's term ends in two weeks, but he's looking for a last-minute Hail Mary. I hope that our great vice president... Our great vice president comes through for us. The Electoral College certification of President-elect Joe Biden's victory is Wednesday, and sources tell CNN Trump wants Vice President Mike Pence to derail the process. We're standing on the abyss uh, of the destruction of our democracy. Despite reports from sources that Pence told Trump he didn't have the authority to block the certification, the president's team tweeted a statement Tuesday night saying the two are in total agreement that the vice president has the power to act. Some Republicans, including Senators Ted Cruz and Josh Hawley, say they'll object to electoral college results from some states, some continuing to repeat false claims of election fraud. Election crimes may have been committed in six of the sovereign states. The expected objections will delay matters, but the end result will remain the same. Joe Biden will be the next president of the United States of America notwithstanding the delusional fantasies of some of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle. As the congressional face-off takes place, some Trump supporters have already gathered in the nation's capital for a March to Save America, which the president plans to attend. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Two new variants of the coronavirus are not likely to make the current vaccines useless. That's the word from multiple experts. They say the new variants, one discovered in England, the other in South Africa, appear to be more transmissible. But a University of Pennsylvania expert says the human immune response can still deal with the mutations. That's because the immune system makes a variety of antibodies, so some of them are likely to work. Another expert from the University of Washington posted a study that shows that at least some people's antibodies can overcome mutated viruses. President Donald Trump has signed off on a $3.7 billion grant to help Puerto Rico rebuild three years after Hurricane Maria. The money will help the island rebuild its water and wastewater treatment plants, pumping stations, dams, and reservoirs. Hurricane Maria made landfall in September of 2017. More than 3,000 people died and the storm devastated the island's infrastructure. Locals and experts have widely criticized the president's handling of the disaster. This grant is the second major relief package he has approved for Puerto Rico in recent months. It's now about 537. There it is exactly 64 degrees. And are you ready to try some new coffee? We're going to tell you about Starbucks newest line of winter beverages. And next reaction after it was announced that no charges will be filed in the that police shooting of a man in Wisconsin. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, it definitely does not feel like winter, but it will soon. We're going to check in with Mike after the break. And we just want to let you know about some breaking news right now. WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange extradition was denied earlier this week. And now bond has been denied to him as he remains jailed in Britain. Uh, again, the U.S. about to appeal that extradition denial. We'll have more coming up in our later newscasts. Well, tensions are high in Kenosha, Wisconsin, after a district attorney announced no charges will be filed in the shooting of Jacob Blake. CNN's Connor Powell has more on how the Blake family is responding and how state officials are preparing for potential unrest. It is our decision that no charge will be filed. Kenosha County District Attorney Michael Gravely making the announcement Tuesday afternoon that no charges would be filed in the police shooting of Jacob Blake, a 29-year-old black man. No Kenosha law enforcement officer in this case will be charged with any criminal offense. Blake was shot seven times in the back as Officer Rustin Shesky was responding to a call about a domestic incident. He survived the shooting but was left paralyzed from the waist down. It hurts to breathe, it hurts to sleep, it hurts to move from side to side, it hurts to eat. Chesky told investigators that he used deadly force during the encounter because he was concerned Blake, while attempting to flee, was trying to kidnap a child in the back of the vehicle. 
Ben Crump, a civil rights attorney representing Blake's family, said in a statement, quote, we are immensely disappointed in Kenosha District Attorney Michael Gravely's decision not to charge the officers involved in this horrific shooting. We feel this decision failed not only Jacob and his family, but the community that protested and demanded justice. The shooting increased tensions last summer as protesters around the world took to the streets calling for racial justice following the deaths of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmed Aubrey, among others. On Monday, Governor Tony Evers mobilized the National Guard in Kenosha in preparation for any possible unrest in the city. And that was Connor Powell reporting. 542, 64 degrees. People have a lot of questions when it comes to getting the vaccine for COVID-19. Up next, experts talk about the safety of the vaccine if you have various health conditions. Five forty fours. more coronavirus vaccines roll out. You may be wondering whether to get vaccinated when it becomes available to you. Especially if you're pregnant, nursing, or have allergies. CNN's Mandy Gaither has more on what medical experts advise. Two coronavirus vaccines currently have the green light in the U.S. The first is Pfizer-BioNTech's vaccine, two shots given 21 days apart. This one is recommended for anyone 16 years and older. The second is Moderna's vaccine, again two shots, but this one is given 28 days apart and is recommended for those 18 and over. Research is still being done to determine whether these vaccines are safe for children and younger teens. If you're pregnant, you can choose to get the vaccine but you should know that these vaccines were not extensively studied in pregnant women. So there's limited safety data to look at for that group. On the other hand, COVID-19 itself poses a risk for pregnant women. The CDC says that some women who contract COVID-19 are at an increased risk of severe illness and might also be at an increased risk for having a preterm birth. Both Pfizer and Moderna created mRNA vaccines, which aren't thought to be harmful for a nursing child, according to the CDC. For those who are immunocompromised, you may choose to get the vaccine, but these vaccines were not substantially studied for your underlying health condition. So there's not enough data on how safe they are or how effective they are yet. On the other hand, getting infected with COVID-19 can be risky for people with compromised immune systems. For those with allergic reactions, the CDC says you shouldn't get the shot if you're allergic to the components in these vaccines, which you can review on the vaccine's product labels. For today's Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. In your morning consumer headlines, Americans are finally buying more cars again. That's according to General Motors, which just released its fourth quarter sales for 2020. GM is the country's largest automaker and is typically a bellwether for industry trends, but other car makers are also expected to report improvements. Buyers deserted the showrooms at the beginning of the pandemic last spring, but GM says its consumer sales have now returned to pre-pandemic levels. The pace of the recovery is a surprise for many experts who did not forecast such a quick comeback. Starbucks showing off the new winter menu. It includes a pistachio latte and a honey almond milk cold brew. Latte also includes a sauce made with real pistachios and a salted brown butter topping. It's available hot or iced and blended. On the treat side, it's introducing, uh, they are introducing a new earth cake pop and a red velvet loaf. The earth cake, the cake pop is dipped in blue icing and covered in green and white sprinkles so it resembles the earth. <laughs> also added some items to the permanent menu, the honey, almond milk, flat white, and kale and portobello mushroom egg bites. 43 Bed Bath & Beyond stores will shut their doors by the end of February. USA Today reports that these include stores in 19 states and Puerto Rico. Back in July, the home goods retailer announced it was planning to close 200 stores over the next two years. 63 of them shut their doors by the end of 2020. A company spokesperson says with the additional 43 closings, Bed Bath & Beyond would have completed about 60% of its planned closures by the end of February. This time of morning, we start to see a few more cars on the road. Let's check uh, on things with Samuel King. We have plenty of time to stop for coffee wherever you get it at the moment because things are looking uh, pretty good. But we do have this uh, situation out on I-10 West, uh, both directions, the HOV lanes and the main lanes. They're doing some inlet cleaning out there between Lock and Terra Parkway and Ralph Fair Road. That begins at 9, runs until 3 this afternoon. On Fredericksburg Road, uh, taking a look here, you have 15 minutes either way between Woodlawn and Hebner in the Medical Center area. And you're looking at Transguide, I-10 at Woodlawn, uh, looking good this morning, as does 90 at Zarzamora, guys.
Glad there's more time for coffee. <laughs> What's happening over there, Mike? Well, before we get to this beautiful picture and take a look at some of these cute pictures, I want to tell you about some little, 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 little I love the ear flap down. That. <laughs> That's these homes over at the San Antonio Humane Society. Belle is a beautiful four-year-old pit bull terrier princess. She did, look at the floppy ears. Yes, and the most enchanting smile. She loves to explore, learn new tricks. She is treat motivated, as we all are, and ready for new adventure. Here is Gaston. He is a th handsome three-year-old shepherd, loving nothing, nothing more than cuddle up next to Belle. Or you, if you have blankets on the couch, deep expressive eyes on Gaston, wide smile. He'll let you know how much he loves you every single day with that cold yeah. nose right in your face, probably. <laughs> more information, please visit sahumane.org over there, 4804 Fredericksburg Road, 226-7461. Oh, they are cute little guys. Look at those eyes. Yes. Some happy pups. Mm -hmm. And they'll be even happier if they can be adopted. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. All right. Here was the picture from yesterday. It was a great sunrise. Today may not be quite as good. We've got a lot of clouds out there, and we also have a little bit of rain that's starting to pick up, although nothing is showing up in this picture. No really reduced visibilities, anything like that. Here are the couple of uh, sprinkles, and a few more appear to be developing right now there around, uh, say, 1604 and 281 over there, northern uh, Wilson County, and a bit more further up to the northeast. And, and it's up here uh, kind of east and northeast of our viewing area where the majority of the heavier storms are going to be later on today as the front works its way down here. But we'll start to see more of these continue to uh, develop this morning. Visibility in metropolitan areas not bad. Hints of fog here and there. So it's it's kind of right on the verge where it wants to get really foggy, as is the case over there, Del Rio. It's improved slightly around Uvalde and Carrizo Springs in the past couple of hours, as has Beeville gone up. But we still have a lot of the fog and all the ingredients are in place where it can get pretty foggy pretty easily. A lot of moisture upstairs in the uh, atmosphere. But as you can see, things are starting to dry out out to the uh, north and west of us. And so that's what's going to happen as this front moves on through here. This will be one of those that's going to clear everything on out. Timing wise, hill country late morning, noonish or so, and then about two o'clock here in town with the timing of that front moving on through and this is another vantage point on the water vapor imagery and you can see the very distinct line with the drier air coming in here upstairs in the atmosphere right along that front so we will have some of the showers continuing to uh, develop this morning and again up to the east and northeast uh, basically east of Austin kind of on the fringes of our viewing areas where some of the stronger thunderstorms would be and then by early afternoon again things continue to clear out and they'll clear first of all in the hill country obviously it won't get as warm in the hill country with that front moving on through but here in town we should make it to the upper 60s just as the front comes on through about say two three o'clock in the afternoon and then temperatures will slowly start to drop down there is the uh, threat for some severe weather marginal risk in some of our extreme eastern uh, counties later on this afternoon just as the front's moving on through but most of the uh, Anything really heavy would be further off to the east of that. All right, satellite and radar picture and some of those showers are being picked up there. But again, around the country, not a lot is going on. Take this and follow it up to the north and there's the heart of that system, big wintery, winter type system, which is working its way across the northern part of the country. And in behind, that's what's in store for the next couple of days. Beautiful weather starting with later on this afternoon as we start to clear out. And then uh, tomorrow and Friday are going to be just picture perfect 66 at noon. We'll have showers and a few thunderstorms. Again, some of those showers are going to continue to uh, develop this morning and then front comes through again here in town about two o'clock and then we'll start to clear out after that 65 by later on. So we hit I'm going for 68 for an actual high temperature today right as the front moves through and then by later on this afternoon down to 65 degrees. And then we continue to cool down with the clear skies overnight. Normal low temperature tomorrow 41 normal high 62. Much colder Friday morning, and we stay only then kind of a reinforcing little shove of cool air comes in here, so that'll keep us in the 50s Friday, Saturday, only 40s on Sunday, and some more showers on Sunday, and maybe uh, still five days away, maybe a little bit of a wintry mix up in northern parts of the hill country Sunday. A reinforcing shove. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we Thanks, will prepare. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. 553, 64 degrees. Let's check on your winning lotto numbers. We have pick 3820, Fireball 8, Daily 4, 777, oh, excuse me, 1, Fireball 2.
Cash five numbers 2, 10, 14, 22, 35, and Mega Millions, nobody won. So the jackpot is now estimated for Friday, $490 million. By the way, Powerball tonight, $410 million. The Mega Numbers, 20, 43, 51, 55, 57. Mega Ball of four, Mega Plier, two. Good morning, coming up here on a Wednesday on GMA, the latest on that high stakes race in Georgia. Democrat Raphael Warnock making history, becoming the state's first black senator. And that second high stakes race in Georgia that could tip the balance of power in the Senate. It is still too close to call. All of this happening as lawmakers are meeting in D.C. to certify President-elect Joe Biden's victory. And President Trump is still pressuring Vice President Pence to overturn the election. Our powerhouse political team will be breaking all of that down for you coming up right here on GMA. New type of thrift shop now up in San Antonio is put together by the nonprofit Spare Parts. It's called the Center for Creative Reuse, which features items that are pre-owned and donated supplies for teachers, artists, and other creative buyers. We have a link to the center if you want to donate or shop online. It is on ksat.com. Right now, it's about to three minutes till so many businesses feeling the economic impact of the pandemic. Among them, the airlines just ahead on GMSA. Details on a new report that shows airlines could lose more than $35 billion. That is a lot of money. Let's check Trans Guide right now. Sprinkles on the lens on that last one, but not at 37 and Jones Avenue. Samuel's back with a look at traffic coming up after this break. A San Antonio family escapes a house fire, but their home is less severely damaged. More on the investigation coming up. The part that makes me very sad is that after this, in one or two weeks, we will start to see the deaths piling up too. It's Dr. Junda Wu, the medical director of Metro Health here in San Antonio. She says all of the metrics the city uses to track the coronavirus are going up, which is causing cases to increase in Bear County. Democrats one step closer to taking control of the U.S. Senate. I'm ABC's Elizabeth Schulze in Atlanta, Georgia. Reverend Raphael Warnock's historic win coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam, it is 64 degrees. It does not feel like January right now, but that will change. And we're also expecting some rain. We're going to check in with Mike right now. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It's Wednesday, January 6th. Thank you so much for joining us and happy Wednesday. We've got, we've got some rain showing up out there in different parts of town in the viewing area. Here's Mike with more yeah, there on was, that. There was nothing a couple of hours ago yeah. and just a few here and there. Now it seems like things are getting squeezed out a little bit more and we'll continue to see uh, some of the rain developing throughout the rest of this morning and even a couple of thunderstorms are going to be uh, possible. So here's what it looks like on radar right now. And again, just going back a couple of hours, there was hardly anything. And then in these last few frames on this radar loop, you can see a few more showers here uh, right around, say, 281, 410. Uh, 35 and then going up in there towards 1604 a lot more over around uh, just to the east of Lavernia sliding up to the north towards Seguin and then more further up to the northeast like I said this will continue to sort of fill in as the morning goes on and all of this preceding the front which is still uh, way up to the northwest of our area but it's going to be coming down through here in the early afternoon hours there is some fog to deal with not much but a little bit around Kerrville Stinson Randolph New Braunfels and then the thicker fog is down to the southeast and also off to the west this morning. Del Rio is seeing a lot of it there at uh, just a quarter mile visibility and Mountain Cedar 18,200. The updated count today is going to be coming out in about an oh, hour, hour and a half or so. And then we've got that next front moving through later on this afternoon. So that's going to probably shake up those mountain cedar trees again. 63 so temperature is going to be steady this morning. We're above normal right now, above the normal high temperature, I should say. And then we're going to not warm up all that much today. We'll make it up into the uh, about mid 60s at noon. And then we're going to be topping off right around 2 o'clock or so, 68 degrees. Then temperatures in behind that front will start to uh, drop down. It's also going to be on the breezy side. Winds are going to be out in the northwest at about 15 to 20 miles per hour. Next couple of days look fantastic. It's going to be kind of well, more like January. Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Samuel King, and I was just saying that on the far north side, 
things are probably going to start to get a little damp up there if they haven't already. Yeah, that's something to watch out for, but things look good uh, right now on the maps and looking up here in New Braunfels, we will have this construction. There's only going to be one lane though on 35 at FM 306. The overpass are working on the crash cushion this afternoon and this morning that begins at nine. So in just a few hours from now and looking at travel times from that area this morning, 29 minutes on I 10 from uh, Seguin, but 26 minutes right now from New Braunfels to downtown. That's a pretty good traffic time there and some others across the region. 24 minutes from I 10 uh, from Bernie 20 uh, minutes on 90 from Castroville and looking at trans guide uh, 10 at Callahan with little raindrops there we saw earlier and also uh, one more here 37 at Jones looking clear now, but again, watch out for that rain on the roads guys. Thank you, Samuel. A fire destroyed part of a Stone Oak home, and this morning a San Antonio family is left to deal with the aftermath. That fire broke out on Crimson Beauty last night. That's near Highway 281 and Overlook Parkway on the city's north side. Our Stephen Cavazos is live there now and shows us the damage left behind. Hey, Stephen. Well, good morning, Stephanie. It looks like we still have some folks that are combing through that damage this morning here right behind me. Now, we're told that the fire did start on the second story and quickly spread, and most of that damage was contained to that second story. Now, crews had to vent out the flames by creating a hole in the roof. Now, last night, crews did arrive to find flames shooting through the roof of that home. They say that they had first received reports of a child who was trapped inside. Now, thankfully, when crews did arrive on the scene, everyone, including the family's pets, were all able to make it out safely. Now, the Boulevard Fire Department did get some help from surrounding areas such as Savino Park, Camp Rolos, and Spring Branch. The Bear County Sheriff's Office was also here on the scene to assist. Now, the damage to that home, again, as we mentioned earlier, Stephanie, was contained to the second story of this home here. Now, we're told that the cost in that damage is estimated to be $185,000. Reporting live this morning, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Mark, Stephanie. Also this morning, San Antonio police looking for the suspect who shot a man on the west side. Happened around 3 this morning on Montezuma Street near Castroville Road in Guadalupe. They say a driver pulled up to the man, then pulled out a gun and shot the victim in the stomach. He was taken to University Hospital. That driver sped off. To the pandemic, local health officials report 2,152 new cases of COVID-19 in Bear County, and five more people have died from the virus. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says the seven-day moving average is now above 1,400 cases per day. He also says there are more patients hospitalized in San Antonio than at any other time during the pandemic. More than 1,300 are being treated at the hospital right now. Metro Health Medical Director Dr. Junda Wu says the continuing increase is pushing hospitals to the limit of their capacity. Meanwhile, 31 clinics and hospitals in the Alamo City are expected to receive hundreds more doses of COVID-19 vaccine this week. City reports the 325,000 first doses and about 225,000 second doses of the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines will be delivered. Some of the places receiving the shipments include University Health, Christus Santa Rosa Medical Center and Kindred Hospital. You can find out which smaller clinics will get the vaccine on KSAT.com. This morning, ABC News projects that Democrat Reverend Raphael Warnock is the winner in one of Georgia's runoff Senate races, with 98% of the votes reported. Warnock is ahead of incumbent Senator Kelly Loeffler by more than a percentage point. But the race between Democratic challenger John Ossoff and Republican Senator David Perdue is still too close to call. The results could have major implications on which party controls the U.S. Senate. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has the latest. This morning, Democrats one step closer to taking control of the U.S. Senate. ABC News now projects Democratic challenger Reverend Raphael Warnock will defeat Republican incumbent Senator Kelly Leffler in one of Georgia's runoff races. And every day I'm in the United States Senate, I will fight for you. Warnock is a prominent black preacher at Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta, a pulpit that once belonged to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. In a victory speech, Warnock acknowledged his historic role as Georgia's first black elected senator. I come before you tonight as a man who knows that the improbable journey that led me to this place in this historic moment in America could only happen here. But his opponent, a staunch ally of President Trump, not giving in. We have a path to victory and we're staying on it. I, that's right. 
The other race between Democrat John Ossoff and Republican David Perdue remains too close to call, separated by just a couple thousand votes. Democrats need to win both seats to flip the Senate. This was a political earthquake in Georgia. It leaves Democrats with the very real possibility of taking control of the Senate for the first two years of Joe Biden's term, and it punctures the myth of infallibility, of unbeatability that President Trump has created inside the Republican Party. President Trump has been a constant presence in the election here, chastising the state's election officials and claiming without evidence the November votes were rigged. Some Republicans fear the president's claims may have suppressed GOP turnout. After the election for the president, it was just kind of like, wow, did our vote count? Election officials here in Georgia say the final results could come this afternoon, but they're also giving a reminder that candidates can request a recount if the results are within a margin of 0.5 percent. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Atlanta. A joint session of Congress will convene today to certify the results of the Electoral College. Reports say the Vice President Mike Pence will not block the certification of President-elect Joe Biden's win. However, President Donald Trump sent out a statement saying Vice President Pence will prevent it, despite there being no constitutional power to do so. The challenge is being led by Texas Senator Ted Cruz, along with several other Republican lawmakers. Our, uh, Texas Senator John Cornyn says he will not object to Biden's win. The 87th legislative session in Texas will begin next week, and we now have an idea on what major topics will be debated. State Representative Lau Larson from San Antonio is proposing a measure that would make lawmakers in the state meet every year instead of every other year. He says there have been major catastrophes in the past few years, such as the current pandemic, that has demanded the government's response, but the legislature was out of session. Other big topics include the budget, health care, redistricting, and police reform. Right now, it's about 10 minutes after the hour, 64 degrees. And Spurs have their first win in the new year, beating a familiar foe in California. We're going to have the top moments from last night's game against the Clippers. It was a pretty good one. And a study says eating red meat could shorten your lifespan. We will see why the increase of iron in your blood could be the culprit. And taking a look outside with live cam, when we got here there this morning, there was no rain, and now there is rain out there. We're going to check in with Mike to see what we can expect for the rest of the day. If you love cutting into that juicy steak or taking a bite of that burger, you may want to pump the brakes on your red meat intake, according to a recent study. A new study looked at more than 1 million people to study their iron in their blood levels and findings are suggesting that the iron levels in the blood could play a role in how long you live. The international study using genetic data from more than 1 million people suggests that maintaining healthy levels of iron in the blood could be key to aging better and living longer. Results show too much iron in your blood appear to be linked to an increase in dying earlier. Paul Timmers with the University of Edinburgh in the United Kingdom says that they are excited by these findings as they suggest that high levels of iron in the blood reduces our healthy years of life and keeping these levels in check could prevent age-related damage. He says that the findings on iron metabolism might also start to explain why very high levels of iron-rich red meat in the diet has been linked to age-related conditions such as heart disease. We can add this latest study to the growing evidence that iron overload or our bodies not being able to break it down properly can have an influence on how long we're likely to live as well as how healthy we're likely to be in our later years. Scientists also hope that with this study further down the line, we can see the development of drugs designed to lower levels of iron in the blood, which could potentially add extra years to our lives. Back to you guys food for thought and the shish kebabs that look so good in that story they actually look like they were chicken <laughs> so we can eat those yeah those are those are safe That's um and, well you know earlier samuel king was saying that we had time to get coffee do we have time for tacos how are the roads looking <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's hungry over there. Um, things are looking okay, but we do have one situation uh, here. This is on uh, the east side. This is I-10 at New Braunfels, and you can see there's uh, some slow traffic there on the service road, we believe, or the frontage road. We believe that's where it is. Not really affecting travel times there right now, uh, five minutes between 410 and downtown. But here's a look at that situation on uh, Trans Guide here, and you can see the police activity. Again, not really on uh, I-10 itself. Looks like it is on uh, the uh, frontage road there. So that's something we're going to keep an eye on this morning, guys. 
uh, something that has changed since about 430 and Mike was just chatting about it moments ago and that is we're seeing an increase in some of the uh, rain out there. Yeah, there was basically nothing when we first started off this morning and now we are starting to see uh, a couple of more showers kind of popping up and they'll continue to fill in throughout the rest of the morning preceding the uh, cold front which is going to be moving through here later on early this afternoon. Temperatures are basically going to be steady. What you have right now is what you're going to be seeing throughout the rest of the next uh, couple of hours. Fog, some mist and a shower, maybe even a storm and that would be going into the mid morning hours. Then 68 later on this afternoon. That's the high temperature about 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock and then temperatures will begin to drop down will clear out as that front moves on through here and the wind is going to be picking up so later on this afternoon it is definitely going to be on the uh, breezy side. All right yesterday we had a beautiful sunrise and showed you that one earlier and then boy there's another beautiful shot. These were from yesterday today. I don't think we're going to be seeing uh, any great sunrises out there uh, looking off to the east. No, nothing out there. Just a lot of clouds and you can see almost looks a little hazy off there in the distance. So here's radar. And like I said, there was nothing showing up even an hour ago, basically. And now these showers have definitely it's, it's like once one popped up. Now all the rest are starting to get uh, squeezed on out. And we do have some right there along 35 on the east side. Everything's kind of moving up to the northwest and then 1604 and further up uh, around Balverde heading in toward New Braunfels. So if you're going out 35, you're going to run into a little bit of that rain. Same thing going out 10 in towards again and more of this further on out to the uh, the northeast. A little bit of fog, not much around the uh, metropolitan area right now, but a lot off to the west as well as down to the southeast, although it has definitely improved around Beeville, which was down to zero visibility just a couple of hours ago. As far as the timing of the front, again, it's going to be early afternoon. We've got a lot of humidity out there. Dew points are above 60, so you definitely feel it kind of dampish where even where it's not raining, and that's been the case all morning long. And then as the front moves through the hill country, first of all, things begin to dry out and clear out. Comes through about 2, 3 o'clock-ish here in town. Winds will shift around to the northwest. And like I said, it is going to be on the breezy side today. There's the front just going through San Angelo right now, not quite through Del Rio. Much colder air. We'll get uh, cooler temperatures tomorrow. Then we get sort of a secondary push of some colder air coming in later tomorrow. And that's going to really cool us down for Friday and then going into the weekend. And there's the very distinct line along that front. This is the water vapor imagery upstairs in the atmosphere, so we will have some beautiful blue skies uh, later on this afternoon and then especially the next couple of days. Rain will continue to develop throughout the uh, morning hours and especially by late morning and right around noon lunchtime and early afternoon. We'll see more of the rain and even some thunderstorms uh, developing and most of those as you see from this computer model, which I think does a really good job depicting this. Most are going to be up to the uh, the northeast and things will continue to clear out then as the afternoon rolls on. Some of those storms could be on the strong to severe side in our extreme eastern counties that marginal risk high winds and hail but most of the uh, strongest are going to be well off to the east and northeast of our area. So here's the uh, trough that's coming on through here. And that will pull down, give us the chance for some rain, pull down some cooler air in behind it. We get that secondary surge of cool air coming in here then for Friday, Saturday. Beautiful the next couple of days. Clouds will increase on Saturday. And then we have another disturbance which is going to be coming on through here. And the exact positioning of that is really going to have a big bearing on what happens on Sunday. We will have some showers around here. Much cooler air is going to be coming in. And one computer model is really sold on having some mixed precipitation, a little bit of snow and sleet mixed in with some rain in the hill country Sunday. And others aren't quite as bullish on that, but we'll definitely have to keep an eye on it because it's going to be a real close call as far as having just rain or something more wintry up in the hill country on Sunday. As far as today goes, we're going to see more showers developing throughout the rest of the morning. 66 at noon, even a couple of thunderstorms, especially off to the east and northeast. And then we'll top off with temperatures right around the time the front moves through here. I'm going for 68 and then we drop down in the afternoon and winds are going to be picking up out of the northwest. 15, 20 miles per hour gusting from there. We'll see more sunshine and later on tonight, clear skies and that's going to allow things to cool down, down to normal tomorrow morning back up to normal tomorrow afternoon. Then that secondary push of cold air. So low 30s, um, low to mid 30s Friday, Saturday, 50s for high temperatures and that chance for rain, maybe a little bit of mix up in parts of the hill country on Sunday and then another shot of cold air first of next week. Yeah, look at those morning lows next week. Wow. Yep. True it's January. It's going to be cold. Love you're it. Ready. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're going to be ready for that. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs>
Right now, 621 and 64 degrees. And traditional tailors are being targeted by Amazon. The company is now launching virtual tailoring services. Find out more in today's GMA First Look. Here's your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. Make fitness routine with pure protein. High protein, low sugar. Tastes great. High protein, low sugar. So good. High protein, low sugar. Mmm, birthday cake. Pure protein bars and shakes for every fitness routine. You try to stay ahead of the mess, but scrubbing still takes time. Now there's Dawn Power Wash Dish Spray. It's the faster way to clean as you go. Just spray, wipe, and rinse. It cleans grease five times faster. Dawn Power Wash. Spray, wipe, rinse. A must in your medicine cabinet. Less sick days. Cold coming on? Zycam is clinically proven to shorten colds. Highly recommended. Zycams love Zycam's unique zinc formula. It shortens colds. Zycam zinc back cold. No matter what sometimes keeps you up, Nature Made helps you win the night. Our melatonin gummies are scientifically developed to help you fall asleep faster naturally. Nature Made, the number one pharmacist recommended vitamin and supplement brand. In this morning's GMA First Look, could this be the future of online shopping? Amazon is bringing big tech to fashion. A custom-made t-shirt you design with sizing aided by photos you provide. It gives you options like v-neck, crew neck, slim or loose fit, and length. Then you take two pictures wearing fitted clothing and upload them. This is the Amazon shirt that I ordered. V-neck, it's, uh, it's fitted on my body. It's pretty well sewn. I've already washed it. It's holding up. You're wondering if it's better than any other t-shirt? I don't know if I would notice any sort of tangible difference in my every day-to-day -day life if I had the $25 shirt versus the $5 shirt, but they're both, they're both pretty, pretty decent shirts to wear with these jeans. And what exactly happens to that data that you upload about your fit? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland, California. Good news, Spurs fans. At 625, the first game of a five-game stretch on the road started well for the Spurs. Silver and Black held on to beat the Clippers in a close game last night. Patty Mills led the team in scoring with 27 points, hitting a career-high eight three-pointers. In fact, the Spurs tied a franchise record with 23s in the game. The big moment came in the final seconds of the game. Spurs up by three. Clippers had the ball. L.A. would have one last shot. The ball in the hands of former Spur Kawhi Leonard. Leonard gets the look, misses the three. Spurs win it. The final 116-113. Spurs stay in L.A. They'll play that other team in the city. They take on LeBron James and the Lakers tomorrow night. Tip off the schedule for 9 o'clock San Antonio time. And the Mega Millions jackpot now up to $490 million after nobody matched all winning numbers last night. The next drawing is on Friday. Meanwhile, the Powerball drawing is tonight and has a grand prize of $410 million. And it may be time to adjust the atomic clock. As scientists are considering shortening the minute to 59 seconds. Now that's because the Earth is rotating faster than usual and a one second difference could be set things straight. Now they've tinkered with time before when the planet was spinning slower. The atomic clock is used as a time standard to help keep track of time consistently around the world. And we were worried about Y2K. This could really mess up our computers, <laughs> right? Lots to worry about right now. Well, we won't worry about it right now. Okay, we'll take a break then. Yeah. Time now, 627 and 64 degrees. Drama expected today's joint session of Congress to certify the Electoral College results. We'll hear more about what is expected on the Hill today. Coming up. First came angry words, then came gunfire. Police are now looking for the person who shot a man on the west side. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story. A fire on the city's north side is still under investigation this morning, but the family inside is left to deal with some devastating damage this morning. More on that coming up. A showdown expected on Capitol Hill as Congress convenes to certify the presidential election results. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington with details coming up. 
Outside right now, it is 64 degrees. Don't be lulled into a false sense of security. Changes are coming. Details with Mike Ostrage coming up, including uh, upped rainfall chances. Hi, good morning. It is Wednesday, January 6th. Rise and shine. Rise and shine. Some of you might see a sprinkle or two, and that's happening right now, Mike Ostrage. Yes, indeed. So even though temperature-wise you don't want to uh, take a jacket, take a little light rain jacket and make sure the kids have one because we will continue to see more of these showers developing as the uh, the morning rolls on and going into the first part of the afternoon. So, yeah, like uh, Mark mentioned, 64 right now, uh, well above the normal high temperature. Yeah, high temperature uh, dew points at 61, so a lot of humidity out there and that southerly wind is continuing to pump in the humidity. And here's the showers. We didn't really have much of anything just a couple of hours ago, and they have definitely started to uh, fill in a lot more. We've got a few even on the uh, south side of Bear County and then more off to the northwest on the especially northeast and uh, east side of Bear County and moving off to the northeast and a few more of these showers then continuing up in towards San Marcos and Austin. And it's over here northeast of our area where some of the uh, we'll see a couple of thunderstorms trying to develop later on and that's up to the northeast where some may be on the potentially strong side. Visibility is pretty good right now. Just a couple little hints of fog in the metropolitan area, but especially off to the west is where the thickest fog is and it's been uh, just been sitting there about a quarter mile at Del Rio all morning long. Fog Rock Springs down to Carrizo Springs, Catula and then off to the uh, southeast and boy, the mountain cedar. 18,200. The updated count's going to come out in about a half an hour, 45 minutes, and that won't take into account the front that's going to move through later on this afternoon because it is going to be breezy this afternoon. Showers, a couple of thunderstorms around the area this morning, up through, say, noon, early afternoon. The front's going to move through the hill country, maybe late morning, noonish, and then here in town, roughly 2 o'clock. Winds will shift around. It is going to be breezy. We are going to be clearing on out. We hit a high temperature around 68 degrees just as the front moves through and then we'll continue to drop down throughout the afternoon and the rest of the week. Sunny, cool and then cold It's going to be beautiful the next couple of days weekend. Talk about that coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Samuel King and uh, seen any rain anywhere out there? Any problems from There's it? a few rain uh, drops on a, the trans guide cameras, but we do have this one problem here, and that's in the heart of town here. This is at 10 at uh, New Braunfels, uh, where we have a crash here. Uh, so watch out for that. Looks like most of the action is on the uh, frontage road there and looking at some travel times. If you're coming in from the north, uh, 281 from Belverde, 30 minutes now. Also a half hour from Seguin on I-10, 24 minutes uh, from Bernie on I-10 as well. And here's a look at Transguide. Again, the situation here at 10 at New Braunfels. You can see the police activity. So if you're uh, on the, the shoulder there or the uh, frontage road there, that's something to keep in mind this morning. Uh, Mark, Stephanie, over to you. San Antonio police say an argument between two men seems to be what led to a shooting on the west side overnight. The man who was shot is in the hospital while the shooter is still on the run. Our Katrina Weber is at public safety headquarters with a live report this morning. What do police know about that shooter, Katrina? Well, good morning. It doesn't seem like police have a whole lot of information just yet. The description that they shared with us is that he was someone who was wearing a tank top and driving a black car. That shooter already was gone when police arrived shortly before 3 o'clock this morning. They found the victim, who was about 30 years old, in the 2000 block of Montezuma, not far from Guadalupe. And police say that he was in that area. He was shot in his upper belly. Police say the shooter drove up to him, had words with him, and then pulled the trigger. Officers say that the victim was stable as he was loaded into an ambulance to be taken to a hospital. Again, they're still looking for the shooter who they describe as wearing a tank top and driving a black car. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. A family forced out of their Stone Oak home after a fire broke out there last night. This happened on Crimson Beauty near 281 and Overlook Parkway. Stephen Cabasas is live there this morning with the damage left behind. Good morning, Stephen. Well, good morning, Stephanie. Now, although that fire did start last night, the investigation into a cause it is ongoing this morning or continues this morning. That is now we are told that the fire did start in the attic, but quickly spread on the second store to some pretty extensive damage. Now, the Boulevardy Volunteer Fire Department did get some assistance from crews from Chavano Park, Camp Bullis, and Spring Branch. Again, the Bear County Sheriff's Office was also out here on the scene, but we are told when they first received reports uh, that there was a child actually trapped inside, but 
Thankfully, when they arrived on the scene, everyone, including the family's pets, were all able to make it out safely. Now, crews had to vent out the flames by putting a hole in the roof. However, crews say this was a pretty destructive fire. The damage to that home was mostly contained to the second story, but we are told there is some water damage also on the first floor. Now, thankfully, there were no injuries to report in the family's pets were also able to make it out safely. But as we mentioned, the damage is pretty severe. They're now facing $185,000 in estimated damage. Reporting live on the city's north side, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Mark Stephanie. Congress is scheduled to formally confirm President-elect Joe Biden as the winner of the 2020 presidential election today. A joint session of Congress is expected to count the votes on Capitol Hill. But the routine procedure could be disrupted as some Republican lawmakers, led by Senator Ted Cruz of Texas, plan to challenge the process. ABC's Faith Abube tells us what we can expect. Overnight, President Trump denying reports that Vice President Mike Pence told him he lacks the authority to overturn the election in his favor. In a statement, the president claiming he and the vice president both agree Pence, quote, has the power to act. Pence is expected to oversee a joint session of Congress today as they certify electors for President-elect Joe Biden. According to the Constitution, the vice president's role is merely ceremonial, a job that only involves opening envelopes that show electoral college votes and announcing the winner. But President Trump has now repeatedly suggested falsely that Pence can do more to benefit him. I hope that our great vice president, our great vice president comes through for us. Sources tell ABC News during a White House lunch on Tuesday, Pence pushed back on the idea, telling Trump he has no authority to overturn Biden's win. Trump's own lawyer agrees. If that were the case, any vice president could refuse Andy any election. Still, the usually quiet joint session to certify the electoral votes expected to be full of political theater. 13 GOP senators and 140 House Republicans say they plan to reject Biden's electors, other Republicans quickly distancing themselves. There is no role for the Congress to object to, to the electors. Meantime, blocks from the White House. <laughs> Scenes like this, as many as 30,000 Trump supporters are expected to gather for demonstrations. President Trump also expected to join. The National Guard deployed to provide, quote, traffic control in the city. And despite any objections today, Congress is still expected to certify the presidential election results for Joe Biden. But it will be a long day on Capitol Hill. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. And in Georgia, ABC News projects Democratic challenger Reverend Raphael Warnock is the winner of one of the Senate runoff elections. Warnock, who spent 15 years leading the Atlanta church where Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. preached, defeated incumbent Senator Kelly Leffler. Warnock is also the first black senator in Georgia state history. Meanwhile, the other Senate runoff race still too close to call. Democratic challenger John Ossoff currently leads Republican Senator David P Perdue by about 10,000 votes, which will likely face a recount because it is so close. Here's a look at the current balance of power in the Senate with Ossoff. If Ossoff wins as well, that would give the Democratic Party 48 Senate seats compared to the Republican Party's 50. But two independent senators routinely vote alongside Senate Democrats. In the event of a tie in the Senate, the deciding vote would go to Vice President-elect Kamala Harris after she's sworn in on January 20th. In your morning headlines, there were some protests around the country after a Wisconsin prosecutor declined to file charges against the police officer who shot Jacob Blake in the back last August, leaving him paralyzed. Demonstrations in Kenosha, Wisconsin, where Blake was shot were nonviolent. In Portland, Oregon, police officers clashed with protesters over the decision. U.S. Department of Justice is asking for White House approval to change the enforcement of a federal civil rights law. That's according to the New York Times. The change would impact programs that receive federal financial assistance and will get rid of protections for employment, housing, and other areas that adversely affect minorities in the U.S. The first ever oil lease sale will take place in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge today. Alaska Public Media reports President Donald Trump's administration is offering 10-year leases on 22 tracts of land for drilling oil, which was opened as a part of the 2017 Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. However, environmental groups and indigenous nations are raising concerns about the potential harmful impacts. The area is one of the largest remaining wild spaces in the country, and it's a critical area for caribou and polar bears. A British judge denied bail the WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange this morning. The judge ordered him to remain in prison while the courts consider an appeal by the United States to extradite him. 
On Monday, a judge rejected an American request to send Assange to the U.S. to face espionage charges over WikiLeaks's publication of secret military documents a decade ago. And time now is 641 and 64 degrees for now. Many businesses have been greatly impacted by the pandemic, including U.S. Airlines. We're going to see uh, the impact that pandemic is having on those companies coming up right here on GMSA. Airline stocks in 2020 dropped the most in years. Now, American Airlines share price lost 45%, its biggest percentage decline since before the carrier's 2013 merger with U.S. Airways. Delta Airlines stock lost 31%, while United Airlines fell 51% all over the last 12 months. It's the biggest drop since 2008. Southwest lost about 14%. The S&P 500, meanwhile, rose more than 16% in 2020. The pandemic forcing carriers to quickly shrink, cut routes, and park hundreds of jets. U.S. carriers increasing their total debt by, get this, $67 billion in 2020, and it now sits at $172 billion to weather the crisis, according to the trade group Airlines for America. Paying that down will be a headwind over the next several years. The good news, though, air travel demand has recovered a lot of ground compared to the volumes hit early on in this pandemic. Back on April 16th, the Transportation Security Administration screened about 95,000 people at U.S. airports. That's less than 4% of the 2.6 million people that had passed through the checkpoints a year earlier. TSA airport screenings, fueled in part by the year-end holidays, surpassed 1 million people a day in the last five days through last Wednesday. Though that's still down about 45% from a year earlier. A lot of potential customers are still not flying, though, as coronavirus infections rates are getting even record highs. New travel restrictions are being implemented, and government officials are recommending to avoid travel, helping to stop the spread of COVID-19. Guys, back to you. 646, 64 degrees. Let's check back with Samuel King. How are the roads looking now? We've got a couple of accidents uh, still on the roads. We have a new one here. Uh, this is a uh, loop 410 at Evers, so watch out for uh, the slowdown there. And we still have this reported here at uh, I-10 westbound at New Braunfels Avenue. But as we take a look at Transguide here, you can see that that is starting to clear out. So we'll see that drop off a little bit. But we also have some drops on the Transguide lens at I-10 at Woodlawn, Mike. And we're going to be seeing a lot more of that in those pictures as the the morning rolls on. Thank you very much, sir. Here's a look at uh, Mr. Childers. Haven't uh, seen a picture from him in a while, but boy, that is beautiful. And as he always says, God's handiwork. That is a gorgeous shot. Thank you very much for that. Okay, um, saw some raindrops on that one Transguide camera. Nothing is showing up in this picture. This is 410 I-10 looking off to the east, but obviously a lot is showing up there on radar. And this continues to uh, fill in. We've got all of these showers over here, uh, 1604, right around 35 and 10 on the uh, near and far north side, basically going up 281. And then over there on the uh, northwest side as well. And a little bit more down here to the south, just around 35 on the southeast side and down around Elmendorf, a couple of these showers. So these will continue to sort of fill in throughout the rest of the morning. And again, been watching the uh, fog, which is not too bad. It's dropped down. Visibility has in Kerrville somewhat. Still plenty of it out there in Del Rio. Beeville was at zero visibility when we started off this morning, and now things have cleared out there, but some around Gonzales as well as up around Austin. So we're still going to be kind of flirting with a little bit of this fog on top of some of the rain. Humidity is very high. It has definitely gone up, and it's going to stay this way through noon, early afternoon, but then here comes the front. Obviously, it'll come through the hill country first of all, and then by about 2 o'clock, we'll start to see the humidity drop off. The wind's going to be shifting around out of the uh, northwest, and it's going to be on the breezy side later on this afternoon. So, boy, you know, it's going to be shaking up those mountain cedar trees, unfortunately. And uh, the colder air which we're at 64 here in town, but then 45 right now in San Angelo. So we'll get that cooler air coming on in here and then sort of a secondary shove of it is going to move through tomorrow. So we'll be down to about normal temperatures tomorrow. Then we're going to be even cooler than that for Friday and going into the weekend. We'll see a couple of showers around here and they will continue to develop right uh, 
firing up as the afternoon goes on, as the front moves on through, and especially off to the northeast is where some of the potentially stronger storms are going to be, and things will continue to clear out from west to east as we go on throughout the uh, the rest of the day. And some of those storms maybe in our extreme eastern counties would get a little bit on the stronger side, but there's a better potential for anything severe further off to the east over there around uh, Houston. So there's the trough which is coming on through here, and that's going to pull down some cooler air over the next couple of days. We get cleared out quite nicely, and that's going to be through Friday. Then the clouds increase Saturday, and this next disturbance is going to be moving on in here. And exactly how far south it goes and the timing of it is still a little bit iffy because some computer models are keeping some rain around and then having the cold air come in. So we could see some mixed precipitation in uh, northern portions of the hill country on Sunday. Other models get the rain out of here and then the colder air comes on in. So it's going to be a real close call as uh, far as what is going to be falling in the hill country on Sunday. 66 degrees today at noon showers. A couple of thunderstorms will continue to develop and most of the storms will be again further to the east. And then we top off about 68. We'll drop down to 65 degrees late this afternoon as the front moves on through. Wind will pick up out of the northwest and it's going to be kind of breezy this afternoon. Clear skies. Normal low temperature tomorrow, normal high. Then that secondary push of cold air moves in here, so that'll knock us down to the mid 30s. So definitely freezing Friday, Saturday mornings in the hill country and highs only stay in the 50s and then mid 40s on Sunday. So it's going to be cold and wet on Sunday. Maybe some mixed precipitation up in the uh, hill country on Sunday. Good uh, football watching playoffs this weekend. Triple header both Saturday and Sunday. So there you go. Or take decorations down Saturday. Oh, I went ahead and bit that bullet yesterday. They're down. They're down. <laughs> not mine. I was like, maybe we'll leave them up till Valentine's Day. Sure. Yeah. Why not? Well, of course, today is the, the 12th day of Christmas, the, right. the epiphany. So it was okay to leave them up till today. Right. Yeah. After we'll today, eh. we love your plan. 651, <laughs> 64 degrees. We'll see how it works out. And every industry has been impacted by the pandemic in one way or another. Tomorrow on GMSA, we will look at ways the fashion industry is changing and why those changes might stick around forever. Outside with live cam, we're going to check back in with Sammy. I'll look at traffic as we approach the top of the hour. Lots of clouds, a few uh, drizzles out there as well. You're watching GMSA. Top stories coming up. Words may hurt, but gunfire sent a man to the hospital overnight. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Police say he had been arguing with another man just before he was shot. They found that victim, who's about 30 years old, on the city's west side shortly before 3 this morning on Montezuma Street, not far from Guadalupe. Police say someone in a black car drove up to that location, had words with him, then shot him in the upper body. They say the victim was stable as he left for a hospital in an ambulance. The shooter drove off before police arrived. They described him as someone who was wearing a tank top and driving a black car. And again, the victim taken to a hospital stable as he left in an ambulance. Reporting from Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. A San Antonio family escapes a house fire last night, but they're left to deal with devastating damage this morning. Now, multiple fire crews arrived to a home off Crimson Beauty to find flames shooting from the second story of the home. The family was able to make it out safely along with their pets, and thankfully, no injuries were reported. However, the cost and damage is estimated to be $185,000. The cause is still under investigation. Thank you, Stephen. 655 right now. We still have this uh, crash here at uh, 410 at Evers, and this is a live look at Transguide at 410 at Callahan. You can see a bit of the backup, but it looks like they're starting to uh, clear that out, Mike. Yeah, it's uh, kind of damp over there, so just to take it easy as you hit the roads because we do have some showers that are showing up on radar right now in and around town. These will become more widespread this morning. A little bit of fog, especially on the bookends this morning and throughout the rest of today. Front's going to move through early afternoon. Showers, a couple of thunderstorms up until then. Then we clear on out and cool down. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you back here at 9. Have a great day.